All right, now that we have Docker installed, we are going to use Linux, as mentioned, as our operating system of choice in this class. We are going to do all our labs and all our commands are going to run on Linux. Whether it was CentOS or Ubuntu, both systems are going to accept the same commands. So let's start by defining an image. Docker works by pulling images from the some registry or some location by default, it's located in the Docker repository. And an image can be thought of as a template containing an operating system file system and an application of some type. You can think of it like a virtual machine template or like a class if you are coming from a programming background or if you have worked with object-oriented programming, programming before. A, an image in Docker is like a class. You create a class and then you instantiate objects out of that class. The same thing holds for Docker images. You pull an image or you create one and then you pull out or you create containers out of this image. So in order to pull an image, the simplest way of doing that is to use the Docker pull command. So Docker pull, this is the command and then you give it the identification necessary for pulling the image. The shortest form of a docker pull command will be like this docker pull ubuntu here i'm using docker as my command and pull as my subcommand and then i'm giving it just the name of the image so you might be asking where would docker find this ubuntu image to pull it from it is not stored locally obviously we are working on a centos machine so, so there is no room for any ubuntu operating system there so where does docker pull the Ubuntu image from. Let's first press enter and see what happens. And notice what happens. It's telling me that it is using the default tag, latest. That is the first thing that was created for us or that was added for us by Docker, the tag. By default, Docker will pull the image with the tag latest. A tag is nothing but a way to differentiate an image from another, just to mark an image as of some type, some version, or of some flavor. So in our case, we are pulling Ubuntu latest. This command is the same as if I did it like that. Docker pull Ubuntu column latest. If I add a column, I am instructing Docker to pull an image of a specific tag. So let's say for example, that I have an Ubuntu machine with a tag that is like 17.10, for example, and obviously this might be the version of Ubuntu, or I can have a tag that reads Nginx, for example, or latest dash one, whatever tag. You can add whatever tags you need if you are creating an image. We're gonna see how to create images later in this class. However, just understand for now that a tag is just a way to mark an image that it is of some kind. And Docker by default chooses the latest tag for you if you did not supply it already. So if I added latest like this, it's, it's the same as if I omitted it. Your Docker will always download the image with the tag latest. Okay, so what about the rest of the command? I can easily add here the registry from which I want to pull this image from. So by default, Docker pulls its images from the Docker Hub. Let's have a look at Docker Hub first to see what it is like. So I'm gonna open Firefox browser. Okay, and just gonna head to docker hub just like this it's hub.docker.com when i'm when i'm inside can of course create a docker account for you for yourself it's free however you can always check for the available docker images without having to have an account so here we have the docker hub which is the official repository for the images maintained by docker actually anyone can have a repository for Docker containers. Actually, there are more than one. The most famous of which, of course, is the one maintained by Docker, and it contains a lot of images. As you can see, there are a lot of images that are available on the Docker Hub. Some of them are official, and some of them are non-official, and the difference is that the official images are maintained officially by Docker, while the non-official packages are not maintained by Docker, which means that they are not guaranteed to work in all circumstances or in all scenarios. This is just more of a confirmed image that Docker itself is aware of this image and it is actively working in it. So if I chose, for example, Ubuntu, let's search for Ubuntu. 
which is the one that we have just downloaded or pulled as you can see ubuntu and this is the official let's click on that this means that this is this is a this is an official repository and as you can see the docker pull command is docker pull ubuntu the same command that we used just a few moments ago as you can see here we have a number of tags that differentiate different versions of ubuntu or different versions of that image so you have the 1710 you have the 1804 1404 1604 and so on so you can choose whatever tag of those to specifically download or pull the image that you want okay so what if you want to download an image and that image is in a non-official repository as just mentioned by default docker is going to pull the latest the image with the tag latest from the docker hub registry and from the official repositories in that registry so what if you want to download something that is not official so let's say for example that i am searching for my sql sorry it's my sql like this i'm gonna see that i have the my sql which is the official and i also have other images that, that are maintained by somebody else not docker so like this one mysql dash mysql dash server this is maintained by a registry that is called mysql the owner of this repository is mysql okay so if you want to pull this repository notice here the command is a little different docker pull and then instead of just specifying the image name you prepend it with the owner name so it's docker pull mysql slash mysql dash server so that is if you want to download images or to pull images from the docker hub what if you want to pull an image from something else maybe you have a website or an ftp site that maintains containers and you want to use it to download a specific image or you may have subscribed to a third-party container repository like the one maintained by google for example or any other entity and you want to use that for your download in that case you are going to prepend the image with the url of the repository so for example if you are using quay.io to download or to, to pull an image that is called ubuntu you're gonna do it like this docker pull quay.io slash the repository name let's say for example it was ubuntu repo for example slash ubuntu so this is effectively giving the pull the full path for the image starting with the registry name then the repository name then the image itself and of course optionally you can add whatever tag you want to specifically target this image so now that we have successfully pulled a ubuntu image and we had an idea about how images are stored and how you can pull different sorts of images let's see how we can create a container out of that image in order to create a container you will need to run docker but this time I'm going to give it a different command. Let's just clear the screen to give you a better view. Docker run. Docker run is used to create containers out of images. So Docker run, and I'm going to give it two flags, dash I and dash T. And both of them can be combined together as with any Linux command. So it's dash I T together. And then you're going to give it the name of the image that you have just pulled optionally followed by the by the tag of that image because you can download several versions of the same image provided that you, you specify different tags for each one so i can have ubuntu latest and i can have side by side ubuntu 17.10 ubuntu 16.04 and others all on the same machine so docker run dash it ubuntu colon latest and then i can specify a command that is going to be run on that image or technically speaking on that container if i press enter a few seconds and i'm inside a shell prompt that is different than the shell prompt that i was in as you can see it's giving me root at and then a combination of characters and numbers this is the container we have successfully created one and we are actively inside it we are literally inside a shell that is running or that is hosted on that container if you want to prove let's run any command like for example cat slash etc slash os dash release you're gonna see that it's giving me the name is ubuntu the version is 16.04.3 which is the version of ubuntu that is running on that container and the rest of those data are just related to that specific os version okay so 
Let's run ps-ef. You're going to see that I have only two processes running. And technically speaking, I should be only having one process running, which is slash bin slash bash, because this is the process that we have instructed the container to run. ps-ef is just the process that we have created for a fraction of a second, just to give us an overview of the processes that are running on the system. So this process has already gone by now. And the only process that is running continuously in the background is slash bin slash bash. And that deserves a little explanation. A container will continue to run as long as a command is running like this bin bash. If this command ends, the container will terminate. Let's see that in action. I'm going to press control plus P and Q in order to exit from the container without killing slash bin slash bash. Again, it's control plus P plus Q plus letter P and letter Q. That will let you exit out of the container shell and still run the container in the background. So how can you know whether the container is still running or it is terminated? Let's clear the screen. Easy enough, you can run docker container ls. This is going to give you an overview of all the containers that are running on your system. So here I have a container ID that is important. You will need to take a look at that ID because this is the one that we saw when we were logged in in the shell, in the container shell. This was the ID that was typed in the prompt. Then I have the image name on which this container is based and the command that is used to keep this container open, created two minutes ago, status it's up two minutes ago, it has no ports. And this is a friendly name that Docker gives to any container for which you do not specify a name. We're going to see how to specify a name for the container later on in this section. But now the only thing that I need you to understand is that a container will only run if and only if there is a command that keeps it running in the in the background. So now that we have exited out of that container, let's say that we want to connect back or to attach back to that container. In order to do that, we can run Docker container. This time we're not gonna run, we're not gonna type run because run is gonna initiate or launch another container. I'm going to use the exec command. The exec command is going to execute commands against that container and I'm going to pass it again. Then I'm going to give it the container name or the ID. Since I did not supply a name for that container, I'm going to use the ID. So I'm going to copy the ID and paste it here. Then again, I will have to type or specify the command that I need to run in that container. So it's bin bash. Again, I'm inside that container. Now, if you're wondering what those I and T represent, dash I is for interactive and dash T is for terminal. I am instructing the container to run in the interactive mode because by default, the container, as we are going to see later in this section, a container often runs in the background because a container supp supplies a service, like for example, a database or an application or a web server. So it often runs in the background. Here, I wanted to run in the foreground in an interactive mode so that, I, so that I can interact with it. I can run commands directly into it. And the T is obligatory here because I will need to attach my terminal to the container. So I'll have to use both of them together, dash I for interactive and dash T for terminal to be able to attach my terminal to the containers terminal and target a command like this, slash bin slash bash, which is the bash shell. Okay, so now let's exit. And let's again run docker container ls. Okay, in order to stop this container, you will need to run docker stop, then give it the container name or ID. So I can get the ID again, copy and paste. This is going to stop the container. If I now run container ls, I'm going to see that I have no containers running. The output is empty. If I want to have a look at all the containers that are on my system, including the ones that I have stopped, I need to add a dash a to the command. Now I have the container that I used to run. It was created nine minutes ago and it exited 13, 13 seconds ago, just when I used container stop and I gave it the ID of the container. Now, if I want to start it back, I can easily use Docker start, then give it the ID of the container, just like this. Now the container is back. Let's remove the a to ensure that it is running. Yes, it is running and I can easily connect to it again using the same command that I did before. And I am inside. Okay, 
if I want to completely remove that container from my machine, let's clear the screen. I will have to first stop it. So I'm going to use Docker stop followed by the ID of the container, then Docker, Docker container, RM, and then give it the ID of the container. And then it is gone. Now, if I typed Docker LS, it's going to give me nothing. Even Docker LS A, it's going to also give me nothing. The container was completely removed from my machine, but the image is still there. In, if I want to remove the image as well, I will have to use Docker image RM, then the name or the ID of the image. And if you want to get it, you can either use the name of the image, which is Ubuntu, or you can just use Docker image LS like this. It's going to give you the images that are currently installed on your system. Here is Ubuntu from the repository Ubuntu. The tag is latest. This is the image ID, and this is the size and the creation date. And this that creation date is not the creation date on your machine. This is the creation date on the repository from which you downloaded or pulled that image. This image has been created 10 days ago. Now, if I want to remove that, I can just use Docker image and RM, and I can either get it, give it the name or the ID of the image like this. Now it has removed the image with all the layers that this image contains. We're going to talk about layers later in this class. But now if I type Docker image LS, I will have nothing. Okay. That brings us to the end of this lecture. In the coming lecture, we are going to see the more advanced part of Docker, which is how to create an image yourself. So until then, take care.